for our next practice, let's have a look at this question. Please pause the video here and take two minutes to give it a try. And I'll teach you how to solve this question with our next strategy. Our fifth strategy for FIBRW is the analysis of long sentences. As you can see, there is only one sentence in this question. We need to be able to understand this very long sentence to solve the first blank. Here is what you need to do when analyzing a long sentence. The first step is to identify different types of clauses in the sentence, mainly two types, independent clauses and dependent clauses. Independent clauses are clauses that can stand alone as a complete sentence. They are the ones that we need to pay more attention to because they convey complete meanings, which are the central ideas of the sentence. Dependent clauses also contain a subject and verb, but they do not express a complete meaning. They often start with a marker word like what, when, that, and etc. They are often used to add information to the independent clauses. We can ignore the dependent clauses at first. The second step is to identify the main parts and the descriptive parts of the independent clauses. The main parts are subject, verb, and object. And the descriptive parts are words or phrases like adverbial phrases, modifiers, parentheses, and so on. The descriptive parts are used to add information to the main parts, so we can ignore the descriptive parts at first. The next step is to try to understand the main meaning of the sentence by focusing on the main parts of the independent clauses. This is the key step to understand a long sentence. Only when we can identify and understand the main ideas of a long sentence, then we can slowly branch out to analyze the other descriptive information. It's often the case that in a long sentence, there will always be some descriptive information that is so unimportant or trivial that you never need to care or understand at all. So only analyze the necessary dependent clauses or descriptive parts when it's needed. Now let's try to give it a try on this long sentence. In an attempt to lure new students, it starts with a preposition in. This is a prepositional phrase, so it's just a descriptive part. We don't need to care about it now. Leaving business schools, it's a noun phrase, which is probably the subject of the sentence. Including Harvard, Stanford, the University of Chicago, and Wharton. This part is included in dash. It's what we call a parenthesis. It's used to describe the noun before it, which is leaving business schools. It's again a descriptive part, which can be ignored now. Have moved away from the unofficial admission prerequisite of four years work experience. It's clear that there is a verb have moved away from and an object, the unofficial admissions prerequisite of four years work experience. Now we can be sure that leaving business schools is the subject. Up until now, we have found one set of subject, verb, and object, which conveys a complete meaning in this sentence. But we are not done yet. Let's continue reading. Then there is a conjunction AND connecting two similar parts. The two similar parts connected by AND often share the same semantic structure. But what common semantic structure does the two parts have here? Are they two independent clauses, each containing a subject, verb, and an object, or simply two objects or phrases? We are not sure yet. Let's keep reading. Blank have set their sights on recent college graduates. Looking at the options for the blank, rather than, instead, hardly, no longer, they are all adverbs, so this part is not a complete sentence because it does not have a subject. So the subject of this part must be something mentioned before, which can only be leading business schools. The verb here, have set their sights on, is sharing the same subject with our previous verb, have moved away from. 
the conjunction word and before it is connecting two verb plus object structures. Then there is another and, again connecting two similar parts. So-called early career professionals with only a couple years of work under the blank. This is a noun phrase in which the center word is professionals. There is no verb in this part, so this is another object. It is sharing the same verb, have set their sights on, with the previous object, recent college graduates. The conjunction word and before it is connecting two objects. All right, let's piece together all the information we have extracted. The subject is leading business schools. The first verb and object is have moved away from the unofficial admissions and the second verb and its two objects are have set their sights on recent college graduates and so-called early career professionals. And we can happily ignore the two descriptive parts highlighted in gray. Now it gets easy to answer the first blank. The first verb and object is have moved away from the prerequisite of four years work experience. It means it is abandoning the requirement of four years work experience. The second verb and object is have set their sights on recent college graduates. Set sight on something means try hard to get something. Here it means trying hard to get recently graduated people. Have a guess. What is it trying to say here? It's saying that these business schools are abandoning the requirement of four years work experience and are now trying to get recently graduated people who do not have much work experience yet. Requiring four years work experience and recruiting recently graduated people are two opposing practices and the current practice is to set sight on recent college graduates. Now, let's analyze the options one by one. Rather than have set their sights on, hardly have set their sights on, and no longer have set their sights on, all express a meaning which is not setting sights on. But that is not correct. The schools are now choosing to set their sights on recent college graduates. So, we are only left with instead. When we use instead, it means the things mentioned after it is done and the things mentioned before it is not done. For example, when I say I'm not going to school tomorrow, instead I'm going to a theme park, it means I'm going to a theme park tomorrow. Thus, the answer here is instead. Our last strategy is to learn collocations from Lingle a super helpful website with a huge collection of sentences from different sources. We can see that in the second blank, all of the four options are nouns. When used together with the preposition under, under the resume, under the belt, under the biography, under the way, they all seem to be correct. But obviously, there is only one correct answer. Let's see how we can get help from Lingo. Here is what you need to do first. Open the website of Lingle, which is www.lingle.com. At the top, there is an input box. To solve this blank, we want to check sentences containing the phrases under the resume, under the belt, under the biography, or under the way. So we type under the resume slash belt slash biography slash way in this box, then press the enter button and we will get the results as shown on this slide. We can see that there is a column of count which has different numbers. The different numbers represent the number of sentences that include each phrase. As compared to 9,300 sentences including the phrase under the belt and 1,900 sentences including the phrase under the way, there are only 110 and 70 sentences including the phrases under the biography and under the resume. These two phrases are seldom used. Most likely they are not correct collocations, meaning we don't normally say under the biography or under the resume. So these two options are highly unlikely to be the answer. 
So let's focus on under the way and under the belt first. We can click on the phrase to check the sentences that contain the phrase under the way to see how this collocation is used. As we can see from these sentences, we had no idea that the city would go under the way it did. College football is a professional game under the way it's played now. From these sentences, we can get a general idea that under the way means using the method to do something. Under the way it's played now means using the method of how it is played now. This doesn't quite fit with our sentence. Let's continue to have a look at under the belt. Let's have a look at some example sentences containing the phrase under the belt. In the first sentence, he walked past the receptionist and tucked his shirt under the belt. In this sentence, under the belt is in its literal meaning. Belt here is the piece of leather you wear around your waist. Let's read the second sentence. Every sage investor was once a young squirt with just a few years of results under the belt. Does this ring a bell? Do you still remember the sentence in our question? With only a couple years of work under the belt? It's a very similar usage here but we cannot confirm that belt is the right answer yet. We still need to look this phrase up in dictionary to understand its meaning. The Longman Dictionary explains, have something under your belt means to have achieved something useful or important. It has also given an example, a secretary with several years experience under her belt, meaning, a secretary who has achieved or accumulated several years of work experience. Finally, let's get back to the question to check again which collocation makes the most sense. If we put under the way into the sentence, it doesn't make sense because there is no further explanation about what method. If we put under the belt here, it means to have achieved or done a couple years of work. So here it is trying to say the business schools are now trying to recruit recent college graduates and early professionals who have only a couple years of work experience. So the correct option is belt. Okay, I hope the strategies I taught you today are helpful, but you should know that knowing these strategies is never enough to boost your scores. You have to put it into practice. Only practice makes it perfect. While practicing, do not memorize the answers. Make sure you understand clearly how and why each answer is chosen. For example, why under the belt is correct answer instead of under the way. You should learn vocabularies, grammar points, and sentence analysis skills along the way. Rome wasn't built in one day. You need to keep practicing and keep honing your skills. It takes time for you to improve in FIBRW. Please be patient. You can get help with APUNI explanation videos for FIB questions, which have been continuously updated. You can access these videos via the explanation button under the questions. Click the explanation button and you will be directed to the related video. In these videos, we will teach you how to solve each blank step by step, just like what we did today teaching you the necessary grammar points, vocabularies, and reading skills. That's all for today's lesson on fill in the blanks reading and writing. You are recommended to visit www.apuni.com to learn PTE the smart way with more online courses, practices, and mock tests. This is UC, the head teacher here at APUNI. See you next time.